is open and taking the uh, the pose strike a pose <laughs> okay <clears throat> so today we're continuing with some examples so i have one that is uh, in relation with what we did in the first uh, part of this uh, nonlinear dynamics course you know is the energy conservation and potential stuff so, um, okay, so recall, let's start, so, so recall what, what we did a little bit. So uh, we had this, uh, this type of, of uh, 2D systems that uh, look like this, right? So X dot is V, V dot is minus F of X, okay? So let's call this 1D, mechanical systems, okay, with no dissipation, okay. And uh, for these systems, we define the potential, okay, so the potential is by definition, okay, so it's some function V of X, oops, blocked. okay, so it's uh, some function V of X, which is defined as integral from some values to X of F of S dS, but uh, ignore, well, we could write it like this, okay? So rather than putting, uh, uh, putting uh, the, the endpoints, I'm gonna write directly integral, like the antiderivative of F, okay? So this is just the antiderivative of S with uh, the constant, okay, so with the integration constant to be taken to be zero, okay? So it's just the, the body of the antiderivative. Maybe I should have done it like this all the time, okay? So it's the, you know, the meat of the antiderivative, not that, you know, and then whatever we get, remember, is like plus C, so we'll just take that constant to be zero. And then, then we have, um, okay, so for this type of systems, for these systems, okay, uh, we have uh, integral, okay, the energy integral, okay given by um, one over two V squared plus V of X equals constant, okay? So let's call it H. And by the way, what is this constant? Oh, it's whatever we have for the X and the V to be substituted in there at time zero or the initial time, right? So it would be one over two V uh, zero squared plus V of X zero, right? Where X naught and V naught are initial position, initial, okay, that's initial position and velocity. Okay, all right. So we did this before and now what I want to do, I want to take a particular system that is of this form and this cuts is uh, its um, stability uh, of equilibria, okay? Or anyhow, some equilibria. So here is an exercise, okay? So let's say we're looking at a system that corresponds to this second order ODE so x to dots, two cos x minus one times sine x, okay? So the requirement is find equilibria, okay? Um, decide on the, and, and their stability, okay? Okay, their, oops.
and type, like, you know, it's a saddle, it's a sink, that kind of thing, and sketch the potential and the face space, face plane, right? Because it's a 2D thing. Right, so it's a full package. All right, so um, I'm going to flip the page, yeah, and rewrite this as a system. So it looks like this. Okay. So this is, and the original one was, uh, you don't have to do anything. I'll, I'll write the, again, the second order one because I like to have it anyhow. Um, class two. Yeah, good. So X two dots is two plus X minus one. Okay, this is out of the, okay, I took him out earlier. I took him out at 210, okay. so he's fine. Okay. Okay. There's the dog. Okay, so this is the, the ODE, uh, second order, right? And there's a first order system, it becomes um, this. Okay, so sorry, that's minus equals zero, okay. So here, that's a minus. I knew something is not all right. Okay. So that's the, the exercise. So it has a minus there, yeah? Okay. It's not equal to, it's minus there. Okay. So there you go. All right. So now this becomes. No, it's not minus. It's, oh, I'm just. I'm just a lost cause. It's plus, not minus. The okay, plus. So now it's minus two cos x minus one sine x. There you go. Okay, wasting time. But so we have first equilibria, right? So let's find them. So we do right hand side equals zero, and we get all this stuff, right? And then we end up with we have a bunch of them. So we have, let's say, x1, v1 uh, to be 0, 0, right? And then, so from here, we'll get an sine x is 0, and the cos x is a half, yeah? And then we have an x2, v2. So where is cos a half? Is where sine uh, is root 3 over 2. So it's at 60 degrees. That's how I'm thinking. You can do it however you want to. So we end up with x is pi on three, right? But then if I'm doing this on the circle, so I have one value here, but that I have another value here, right? So I'll have pi over three and zero, and then I'll have this one, which is, uh, yeah. So that's pi over three. So that would be a two pi over three, yeah? Two sixties, yeah, okay, zero. And then we'll have one here, x4, v4, right? We'll have it in pi and zero. Yeah, is correct? So you're following me, yeah? Is correct, yeah, okay, good. So we have four of them. That's a lot of equilibria, right? So now we have to do the linearization for each one. So here is what I propose to do rather than do it, you know, uh, 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 uh. let's introduce an operator that basically is the matrix of the partial derivatives there is the Jacobian matrix, okay? So L of X, Y is the matrix that has dbdx, and dbdv of the thing. And then in this matrix for each equilibrium, we're gonna do, oh, this is for the 
equilibrium uh, zero zero. Okay, so we're gonna do L zero zero will be a two by two matrix, and then we'll have equilibrium um, pi on three and zero. See what I mean? So then we'll have L in pi and three and zero. So we'll substitute the values in each one of these. You see what I mean? Okay, so for this one, we get zero and one. That's the easy part, okay? And here, we're gonna put dbdx, right? So we have to do dbdx. We don't have to do anything. I'll just write it smaller so I have fit everything on one line, okay? L of x, y is, okay. So this is dbx and this is dbd. Okay, so this is the zero, this is the one. I leave room because I have to write DDX in there of, right? So we have of this, right? Okay, so of um, Okay. 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 Of minus two cos x minus one sine x, yeah. And then here is a zero, yeah. So this is zero one, and then we do this derivative, right? And, uh, okay, what do we get? Okay, so I have to do the dx of, okay. We get two cos two x, and then minus sine x, not minus, minus cos x and the zero. Okay, so where should I do this calculation? So somewhere I want to squish in this derivative just to check it out that is correct. So we have to do the derivative of, um, let's do two cos x minus one times sine x. Okay, so let's do the, and then we're gonna put the minus in front. So the, the bracket gets into uh, minus two sine x and then times a minus sine x and then uh, plus two cos squared x or if you want here you can do this plus two cos x minus one times cos x so this is a minus two sine squared x plus two cos squared x and then minus cos x and these two guys together, so these fellows together become a two cos two x, yeah? And then a minus cos x. And then I put the result, we have to put the result with a negative sign, right? Okay, so this is exactly with a negative sign. Good, actually it's good. Okay, yeah. I hope you agree with my derivation. There is just a derivation, okay. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so now we have L of X, Y for all X and L of X, not X, Y, X, V, yeah. L of X and V for all X and all V. And you know, to, to do the linearization, I'll just implement the, the numbers in that one, okay? So for the first one would be zero, one, and then we have minus two cos zero, but cos zero is one, so it's just a minus two, and then a zero here. And then for this one, right? So it'll be zero, one, and then uh, minus two cos in, okay, two pi over three, plus cos in pi over three and zero and so forth, yeah? 
Okay. So here yeah, I'm gonna flip the page. I do have this done somehow. So L in zero zero is right. So this is minus two plus one. Good. Okay. We'll just correct it there. So it's minus two plus one because we have a plus cosine zero. So L in zero, zero is zero, one minus one, one. And then we do eigenvalues, okay? And once we do them, okay, you're gonna end up with lambda one, two is plus minus I. So this better be a center, yeah, okay. Good. And then L in pi and three and zero. Okay, so I computed it earlier. So we get these values in, and then we compute the eigenvalues and we end up with lambda is plus minus root three over two. So I'm not going, I'm not sitting on this because I know you can do this. So this is a saddle. And by the way, if we're to uh, define the stability, this so this guy, so zero, zero is neutrally stable. Whereas from this one, right, you have that uh, pi on three and zero is unstable. Okay. Huh? And then you do the next one. Okay, and then L in pi and zero. Okay, I don't wanna do them. You can complete this here. I might put it on the test. There we go, okay. But what I wanna do, I wanna do the other part with the, the uh, range of motion and with the, the phase space, how does it look? And I'll show you how I did it because I think it's much better. And actually all, all calculations that we're doing, be, feel free to use Maple or MATLAB or whatever you want, okay? For finding eigenvalues in case, but these are like two by two systems. It takes you longer to do it with, the, with Maple than do it by hand. That's what I think, okay? But it's up to you how to do it. However, when it's about um, drawing the functions and seeing the phase plot, I think Maple or you know any other symbolic uh, uh, software there is, is more effective for you, I think. So here is what I did, okay? So I'm gonna switch to uh, my screen. Okay. And here is the Maple. To put all this away. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. So here is our. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our system and f of x, right? So f of x actually is with minus. So there you go. I did it backwards. So this would be f of x with a plus. So that's the, the function. This f is the function in the system, right? And then we're finding the potential, which is integral of minus, oh no, I said it right. So f of x. So it's integral of f of x. So we do it. And then I looked at it to see how it looks. And then I plot it. So once we plot it, and actually the plot is sufficient to do it on zero to pi. I did it more just because you know I can, but it's not necessary, right? So uh, we can start saying, oh, you know, if uh, yeah, let's do this kind of stuff. So if I want to see the the range of motion, we can put various values of the energy and just draw, you know, a value. Y and then something that is minus one and then color in order to see it. Let's say we pick red and green. Okay, 
So this is how the potential looks like, and this is a level of energy, and now we can comment, right? So remember, the range of motion is given for those values of x for which v of x is under a horizontal that is fixed, right? The horizontal, in this case, the green one, is set out to be the uh, an energy level, right? So I have to look where the graph of v, which is in red here, is under the green line, if you want. So, oh, it's here. Look, it's all this stuff here, right? So the motion is here and this clearly is bounded, right? Whereas if I move with the green line up above, right? So I'm not sure what the height is there. I guess like something like two point something, two point two. Okay, right. So not with minus, with plus. Okay, Ooh, that's very, sorry, zero. Okay, too much. Okay, of course I can find it because these are the, the points where this function, uh, you know, has derivative zero, right? They're the critical points of that. So, you know, rather than me guessing it like this, right? That, which is a kind of silly, you know, you can calculate it. So for this level of energy, right? You see there are these two equilibria and they're up, right? They're, they're uh, top of the hill, so they will be unstable. So probably we will see this in the phase space when we're gonna plot the phase space using the, the energy integral. And then finally, if we go above this one, right? Let's say here, right? The motion can be, so the graph is entirely under the green line, under this level of energy. So we can have, you know, whatever uh, kind of motion, right? It's, it's free to be whatever it wants. Okay, that's that's uh, that's the interpretation of this, and now let's see the phase space, right? So to the phase space is essentially given by the level sets of the conserved energy function, right? So here it is, that's how it looks, okay? And now if I want to see the phase space, okay, what I have to do is to plot level sets of this function. So that's what I did. And that's how it looks like now because I'm, um, right, it was on different things. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just redo it down there and discuss it together, okay? So what I will do, I will lower these levels. I might just do for us. How many do we need? Okay, two. Okay, let's do one really small. Just bear with me. One a bit bigger. And then we leave this one here. There you go. That might just, and this actually can be even smaller. Okay. better and better okay maybe even high okay so there you go so these are different levels of energy now we will have for here i'll put another one that catches it doesn't catch it doesn't want to okay so where are the equilibria okay first of all oh the equilibria where okay so if you see here Right, this is the potential, right? We had an equilibrium in zero, in pi, and then in two pi, and that keeps repeating. And then we had them at pi on three and two pi over three, right? This is how we computed them. But then of course they show up in, in the graph of the potential as the critical point of the potential. And then they do show up in the phase space, right? As, um, Again, as equilibria, so we'll be one in, so what is the, okay, let's put it zero to two pi on the other one. Okay, so we'll have one here, one in pi, and one in two pi, and it keeps repeating. So, you know, if I go back to uh, the picture with minus two pi, okay, right? It's better because we see it better. All right, let's see, bigger even. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay. I'm gonna 
try to make it bigger a bit if I can. Okay. No. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Okay, there's that. And now I'm going to draw on it. So we have an equilibrium uh, in zero, right? And then we had one in pi, which should be uh, somewhere here, right? Right. And then in two pi and so forth, right? And then we had in pi over three and two pi over three. So here they are. So this would be the pi over three point. Pi over three. Okay, I'm not too good to do this. Okay. And here is right the other one, the two pi over three. Okay. All right. So now if we're to look at the uh, the orbits, right? So um, well, okay, we really have to go lower with these levels. I'm trying, 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 trying. Okay, there you go. So for instance, the one in zero, right? It was um, a stable, a neutrally stable one. It was a center. Here, how the orbits look like, like, a, like really circles around it. They're actually ellipses. So here I'm going to put another one in. So let's make it bigger. Okay, six, something like that. Okay. Four, eight. There you go. All right, so you see how it surrounded it. There will be some here too, right? Like this, but you know, it can do only so much with the computer right now, okay? And then we have the other equilibria that are saddles, right? For those ones, we should get some curves if I am to do the picture here, if I would be patient enough to look for those values of the energy that gives me this, right? They will look here as saddle and then whatever is around them. So we'll have something like this. Okay. And then it goes up here and down there, right? And that's the equilibrium. So that's the idea. And now, you know, with, if we were to put the, the arrows, how this thing is flowing. Okay. So X dot is V. So this is the X axis here. And this is the V axis here. So x dot is v, where v is positive, x is increasing. So I'm starting to put the arrows as they have to be everywhere. Yeah. Okay. And then this one is coming like this. So I told you, I told you that these guys have to coincide, right? Okay, 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 okay. okay. So more or less. Yeah. Uh, no, that's backwards, that's backwards. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm trying to show you how to use Maple for this kind of stuff, right? So this is coming in, this is coming in, this is coming and so forth. So this is this is a kind of how, how this, uh, this face space looks like and then keeps repeating itself, right? So if I'm doing just, you know, zero to to pi, which is sufficient. The rest is just patching together stuff that we know, okay? So there's the, so, you know, you have bounded orbits and then you have these unbounded borders that, that keep going, right? You know, they never stop, right? And the ones that are staying there and then you have the saddles, right? The unstable orbits that are there. And actually my, I hope my picture is correct. I don't know why. Uh, what did I do? Oh, it's something wrong here. Hang on. Now it's good. So when I'm changing the, the domain there, it doesn't look correct. This is correct. The other one is not. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to give you a different flavor of the stuff. Okay. Good. I guess that's that. So you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm doing this because I would uh, I'm encouraging you to to use the computer if you have to. You know, that's the thing. Okay. Good. Okay. So there's that. All right. Uh,
is this pictures. And with this being said, I'm going to move on to talk a little bit about the equilibrium stability in systems that are higher dimensions, okay, higher dimensional than two by two. Now, in principle, as a job to be done, uh, when we want to uh, do the first things, you know, that, that say something about stability of equilibria in higher dimensions, we'll get again to eigenvalues. But that's not the only way. And the eigenvalues are not saying everything for systems of high dimension. There are weird cases where we cannot say from the eigenvalues what is going on. This is contrary to what is happening in two by two systems, right? In 2D systems. There in 2D systems, because it's so low dimensional, from the eigenvalues, we can kind of say everything, right? We can draw it in 3D, you know, the phase space, the full space in 3D with the time on the vertical, right? We can do all this, this uh, uh, reasoning. But from three dimensions up, things are not as, you know, straightforward. Uh, and, and yeah, there are all kinds of methods to deal with that. All right, so I, I want to do just, you know, a little bit of this. Okay, I'll cover it today. I don't think it will be in your test. Uh, it won't be in your test, but then I want to do an example with you that is three-dimensional. So I want to talk about that, you know, in a, in a class and maybe give you an assignment with that or something. So that's why. All right, so here I'm going to write um, equilibria. And stability in uh, ODE nonlinear systems. Okay, non okay. Um, ND, right? Where N is greater or equal than three. And actually, we'll just look at three. We have a glimpse on three, then as you go higher and higher, I guess more, more and more complicated. Okay, so the, the typical format is something that looks like this. Okay, so F is also a, a function, right? So X is in some domain in Rn and F is defined on this domain in Rn and takes values in Rn as well. So F is a vector as well, okay? Um, right, now how do we find equilibria? Well, there again, you know, there are those solutions that everything is frozen, right? So really they're found that as the roots of the right-hand side equals zero. So for example, right, X dot is Y, y dot is z minus y minus x at three, and z dot is y plus x minus x at three. So if we do right-hand side equals zero, we get that, uh, right? So y is zero, z minus y minus x at three is zero, y plus x minus x at three is zero, blah, blah, blah. So we end up with, uh, three equilibria. Okay, once we solve this, we'll have one at zero, zero, zero. And then we have one. So y will be zero all the time. Minus one, zero, minus one. And then we have a third one at one, zero, one. Okay. Uh, that, that's straightforward, I think, right? I mean, that's just solving equations, right? And now it's how do we think about stability, right? So the idea that the definition of stability is the same, right? Is the same for 2D from 3D. If we have Xe, an equilibrium is stable, right? If whatever starts near it kind of stays near it, right? If um, any solution starting near Xe stays near Xe for all times, okay? Not for all times, for all times in the future. That's 
right? Because it might be coming from, I don't know what, um, for uh, T goes to, uh, T, for any T positive, I suppose, right? So is that kind of picture here is the, okay, XC, okay? And I'm taking a neighborhood of it if I want to write it in terms of epsilon and delta, which I will not. So let's say we start uh, close to it with some x0, right? And then we travel from here, but we won't go super far, right? We'll go in another neighborhood of it, but not out of that one, okay? So it's kind of hanging out here, okay? So this is the gray one is a neighborhood of the equilibrium and the dark green one, dark green one is the one where that we kind of stay in for all times, okay? So it's stable. It's asymptotically stable if not only if we start here, right? We uh, hang around, we actually go into XC, right? So I won't do that picture with the asymptote. So it's the same definition. So now the question is, how do I uh, attack the idea of stability? Again, you know, it's it's the same principle. <laughs> when we don't know something, we just try to simplify it to something that we know. <laughs> That's how it goes. So for nonlinear system in, near an equilibrium, we're gonna say, oh, you know, you know, the dynamics in near that equilibrium. So let's say this is the equilibrium could be terrible, terrible complicated, right? But actually in a neighborhood of this equilibrium, so here is, you know, like a little sphere around this equilibrium, the dynamics is almost linear, okay? So it's, it's just, it behaves, is it like a linear system? Like a system with matrices that actually we know how to solve, ha ha, okay? <laughs> that's that's the, the philosophy on it. So here, near this, this XC, we're going to manage to, you know, we're going to say that, well, in certain conditions, the dynamics is actually something that, you know, is very simple and maybe it has three axes and it, it moves along three axes somehow, but, you know, it's, you know, a, a linear system, okay? So something like that. So, you know, near uh, XC, the dynamics, the complicated nonlinear dynamics is uh, almost linear. Okay, so let's see what is behind this almost linear uh, words. Okay, what do we do? Well, it's like this. Okay, so I'm gonna take, right? So here is my object of interest, right? And then we know that XC is an equilibrium. And so F in X E is zero, right? Because that's how we found it. And then we say, hey, we know Taylor series. So near X E, I'm gonna do Taylor expansion because that's what I know as an applied mathematician. My universe is, is blocked to Taylor series and chain rule, okay? So there you go, F in X E plus, and now is the derivative, right? The Jacobian df dx. So this will be a matrix taken an x equals xe and then times x minus xe. And then we'll have here plus terms that I'm gonna, well, higher order terms order two like x minus xe squared, right? Which we're gonna ignore so that's where almost linear comes in, right? This almost linear basically means I'm gonna ignore all the stuff that is higher order, <laughs> okay? So basically near XE, my system becomes something that is like X dot equals, well, F in XE is zero, right? So this guy, cool, this is going away, right? So this is a zero, why? Because of this. Okay, because that's an equilibrium. So it just stays something like df uh, dx at x equals xc times x minus xc. Okay, and remember this fellow here 
we're going to do an example. This is a matrix with numbers inside. Okay, it's not like it has X and Y, it's numbers, it's like two, five, seven. Okay, so now I'm gonna do one more step. I'm gonna say, okay, so let Y to be X minus X, it's exactly what we did at two D systems, right? And if we introduce this change of uh, this shift, right? So Y dot will be X dot. And then we're gonna end up with the system Y dot equals this matrix at x equals xc times y, okay? So if, if you want to something like, for example, like, okay, so we have x, y, z dots, that would be the y, okay? Equals uh, two, seven, minus one, three, I'm just putting some numbers here, zero, one, uh, minus three, five, 11, okay? X, y, z. In other words, is a linear system. And guess what? We know how to solve linear systems, right? We know, I mean, there is the second OD course is supposed to do this in, in your program, right? So, um, okay, Th this is good news, you know, so you're gonna ask me in principle. So what I could, now I'm gonna solve the linear system to see what's going on. Well, not really, we're gonna, do the eigenvalues of this matrix, okay? So here, I'm gonna flip, okay? So you know something, I'm gonna uh, write this again here, you know, my habit. So this was a VF, VX, you don't have to write it again. Okay, and then Y. Okay, so let's call this one, I'm gonna call it L in XC. L from the linear, right? And it's a matrix, okay? Um, all right, so now if you remember exactly like in 2D, okay, if we do a change of variable that is, okay, it will be with P minus one Y, right, where P is the um, matrix with eigenvectors, okay. The point is that once we do this and we do blah, 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 all the job there, which is identical with the 2D, I repeat, we end up with something like Z dot equals, and here is the diagonal form of this L matrix, right? So this will be, for example, like lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and then zero, 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 and then here is the Z, okay? If we are in 2D, in 3D, right? So basically here, so this is like an example, okay? Like an example. The point is that we, we get inside here, right? When we do this, uh, this process here, we get the, um, so this matrix is nothing else but the, the diagonal, the diagonalization of uh, if you want L of XC of that linear matrix, okay? So that's an example is that the, the easiest thing when the eigenvalues are um, different, right? So lambda one, lambda two, lambda three are the eigenvalues of L, yeah? Okay. And why is this interesting? You know, because here I'm gonna continue with my example here so in this example, as I put it like this, we see immediately that for instance, we have X. So if Z is X, Y, Z, right? Okay. Not X, Z. So if, if Z is something like X, Y, Z, okay? Then what we get, we get uh, X, Y, Z dots. So I'm making sure you understand what's going on here. We'll have lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and the zeros, and then x, y, z. So you see the purpose of this diagonalization. You see actually the purpose of that silly thing that you did in linear algebra, that is, let's find the eigenvalues, right? So it was like, oh, why am I doing this? Well, that's why you're doing this, right? Okay. So here, 
we get to x of t is lambda one x and y of t, y, y dot, sorry, okay? And z dot is lambda three z. And these are like the simplest of these that one can solve. So here x of t is like e at lambda one t x naught. And y of t is like e at lambda two t y naught. And z of t is, right? E at lambda 3t z naught. And then now I'm looking where is this one going as t goes to infinity. And here it comes, you know, the, uh, the answer, right? Well, it depends on the lambda, right? If lambda is positive, it's going to infinity. Is lambda, if they're all negative, then they're all going to zero, right? And the equilibrium is stable. So this depends the answer, right? Whatever sign lambda has. And this is a kind of the, the flavor of it. Once, we, once one does this at the theoretical level, right? Because you have to explain why the algorithm is like, you know, just computing the eigenvalues. When we go back to the y thingy, so y of t, so when we go back, meaning that we said here, what did we say? Z is P minus one Y, right? So Z of T, if you want, is P minus one Y of T, right? So we go to Y of T, we get Y of T to be star something like when we write it, E at lambda one T, V lambda one, or V lambda one is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda one plus C to E, Lambda two T V lambda two lambda three T V lambda three. And now you know I'm doing you know the the stability, right? So it's basically what's going on with this. So uh, right in the Y system, we have to look at what is going on to Y of T as T is going to infinity. Okay, so depending if y of t, right, is going to zero as t goes to infinity, then the equilibrium in question is stable, right? I mean, that's where it's coming from. All right? And if not, then not, okay? So that's, that's the, the, how the, the flavor is going. And I, I did this, you know, kind of for a three by three system, but things get, you know, in the same flavor on a 10 by 10 system. And also, you know, you can have diagonalization that looks like this. So you have a Lambda one, and then you have an alpha, alpha, beta, and minus beta. And this would correspond to, uh, Lambda one is real, and then you have lambda two, three to be alpha plus minus i beta. Okay, so this could be a linearization, right? Linear linearization, right? So this could be like an L of xe, right? And then you have to solve this one to see what is going on. So we're not doing all the theory in this. Uh, in this course, right? Actually, the theory is done properly in a dynamical systems course, right? So I don't know how long you're gonna be in school, but you know, I hope to teach this that one in two years or so, because next year I don't already know what I'm teaching. So the thing is that uh, there is a reason why, you know, what I'm gonna write now <laughs> is like that, right? So it's behind this um, path of taking the dynamics near an equilibrium saying, oh, it's almost linear, and then transform that linear bit near the equilibrium into something solving it if you want. But the solution involves this eigenvalue eigenvector business, right? And then from that one, deduce, okay, so in the linear system, uh, the initial equilibrium corresponds to the equilibrium zero and then you know that zero will be stable or unstable depending how the solutions of the linear systems are of the linear system uh, is right so uh, that's what it is so here comes you know the the kind of the uh, uh, 
the core of this thing. So, you know, people figure out that there are two kinds of uh, equilibria. There are equilibria for which the stability can be determined from the linearization with this business of uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And there are equilibria for which the stability, in order to determine it, we cannot say from the matrix of the linearization. And you're going to say, what do you mean we cannot say? Well, you know what happens, right? You know, so there are cases where you actually cannot say, and I have an example here for you, or, you know, to, to see how this is going. So first we put, we're going to put this, this definition. So X is a, a hyperbolic, let's call it hyperbolic equilibrium. This is a good one, right? It's the one that for <laughs> which the, <laughs> the eigenvalues are, are sufficient. If the real part of uh, any eigenvalue, right, is non-zero, right, for any lambda eigenvalue of the linearization, that matrix uh, at, the, at the equilibrium point. Okay, and obviously is not hyperbolic if there is an eigenvalue for which the real part of it is zero. Okay, and here is this theorem that I'm going to put down, and I'm not proving it, but you know the flavor is really coming from this kind of uh, logical reasoning. What's going on? So I'm going to transform it, bring it to a linear system, and I know how to solve that one, and I'm going to think on that one, and then go back. Okay, and this can be done on three by three and also on n by n. Okay, that's it. All right, so if Xe is a hyperbolic equilibrium, then its stability is determined by the eigenvalues of L of Xe uh, as follows. Okay, so actually we have the result. Okay. Okay, so we have um, if okay, there are two. Okay, so, but, but, okay. If there is, okay, I'm using this just to shorthand, right? If there is a lambda such that the real part is positive, then XC is unstable. And we can see why this will happen in a second, okay? And if the other way around, if uh, re, the real part of lambda is negative for all lambda eigenvalues, right? That's that's the the opposite of the one on top. Then Xe is stable. That's it. Okay. And by the way, how come you know? How come can I say you know that is unstable if one of the eigenvalue has the real part positive? Well. Okay, so the solutions, so I'm going back to, um, right, so we had uh, Z uh, dot is, right, so here, diagonal of L. So this is the matrix with lambdas, okay? And then Z, yeah? So that's, okay. And then all the solutions here, they are like X of T, they, they look like, E at lambda t x naught, or they look like if lambda is alpha plus minus i beta, they will be like E at lambda t cos beta t, E at uh, not lambda alpha t sine beta t. So these are the kind of solutions we get here. We don't get anything else, right? And this is because the real part of lambda is non zero. So this guy is never zero. This guy is never one, right? He 
is never one. It's like e at uh, minus three t, or is like e at two t cos five t, right? But it's not. It's not zero. It's never. And once it's not zero, we can take the limit, right? So if we have uh, x of t is like e at minus three t. Oh, at the limit is zero as t goes to infinity, right? And if all the eigenvalues are negative, so they're all like minus three, minus five, minus 25, then all of these guys, y, t, little z of t, right? That form the big z, right? If they're all like e at minus two t and then e at minus 11 t, let's say, they're all going to zero as t goes to infinity. So obviously, you know, this uh, z uh, of t equals zero equilibrium is stable. But what is this z equals zero correspond to? Oh, this corresponds to y equals um, zero as well, right? which correspond to, right? Remember y was like x minus x e. So it corresponds to the equilibrium, right? x equals x e. That's what I mean. So the real part of the eigenvalue not being zero really drives all these little, you know, component solutions to, you know, as t goes to infinity, to either go to zero, you know, to die, or to, you know, explode like if it's e at five, it's just exponential growth, right? And then it's just shoots off somewhere else. Okay, that, that's the philosophy of it. And of course, from a, a, a mathematics point of view, the most interesting things is when the, when this condition <laughs> is not there. <laughs> So what do you do when the real part of lambda is zero? And how come you cannot say what is going on? You know, and the answer is, well, there are different things when real uh, lambda, uh, the real part of the eigenvalues is zero, you have at least one like that. Well, it depends from system to system what, what can happen, right? So here I have a, uh, okay, an example or two examples actually. So here I'll write it like a note, okay? If there is a lambda such the eigenvalue, right? Of whatever, yeah? That's a, let's write it nice, eigenvalue. Such that, look, this is zero, then <laughs> that's what I wrote in my, in my notes. We need other methods. <laughs> right. Well, of course we need something else. We need other methods, <laughs> something else, okay? So, you know, for mechanical systems, we'll have energetic methods. I don't, I don't think we're gonna do it in this course, you know, because I wanna do other stuff. So here I'm gonna, uh, I have two examples uh, where uh, things, uh, are different for having a zero eigenvalue. So here is this one. So let's say that the linearization is that matrix, right? Is like this, right? So we have one lambda is zero. So obviously this is zero, right? And then we have lambda two, three, if we're to compute it is plus minus i, yeah? Okay, so for this one, so near x e, if we're doing the job, right, we're going to get that if you want little z one of uh, uh, t, right, so let's go, I could have done this before instead of x, y, z, little z one, little z two, little z three, oh, well, too late now. So when we're computing this, okay, so we have, um, Z1, Z2, Z3 dots. I want you to see it, okay? Equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 1. And then we have Z1, Z2, Z3. Yeah? So we end up with 
z1 dot equals zero, z2 dot is um, uh, z3, okay, and z3 dot is minus z2, okay, it's cooked up, of course. So we end up with z1 of t is a constant and is whatever is it at time zero. And then if we're solving for Z2 and Z3, we're gonna end up with Z2 is something like uh, C1 cos T plus C2 sine T. This is an oscillator actually, right? So minus C1 uh, sine T plus C2 cos T, okay? So if we're to, to draw the phase space, which we can, we cannot put the time in it, but we can draw the phase space. It has three, um, three directions. Yeah. So we have a, uh, Z1, Z2, and Z3, okay? So Z1 is constant, right? So it stays, you know, whatever is at initial time, it will stay there. So that's, let's say for a value Z1 zero to be, yeah, I'm gonna put it like this, uh, uh, two, okay. And then we would have one, let's say here for Z1 zero to be minus two, okay, and so forth, right? But the point is that, you know, the motion stays in, or anyhow in this uh, picture, right? Will stay in that vertical plane. Let's say Z10 is, you know, Z equals Z10. So for the two one, it stays in that block of two. And how does it look? Well, Z2 and Z3 together, if you look at them, they form uh, ellipses, right? We did that before about the, the center here. So it will look something like this. Okay, so here. That would be the picture in, in uh, right, of the orbits in this 3D phase space, right? It's a 3D phase space. So basically this, this equilibria that uh, um, right, we're doing, right? the, the, not the equilibria, the, the motions near the equilibrium, it really stays on these cylinders, if you wanna put it like this, right? Um, concentric cylinders and it's just that way, right? So if I really wanna put also the arrows, that's how it goes. Huh? Did I do it right? When Z3 is positive, Z2 is increasing. Yeah, it's correct, right? So that's one case when one of the eigenvalues is zero, has the real part zero, and it looks like this. And here is another example. Let's say we have another one in which we get uh, Z dot is minus two, minus one, minus two. Okay, so this one looks a bit more filled in with numbers, okay. And for this one, we get lambda one is minus two and lambda two equals lambda three equals zero, okay. So it has two eigenvalues zero, okay. And now if we're solving this, so if we solve, Okay, we're gonna end up with uh, little z, so z1, z2, z3 of t, okay? So we're gonna end up with z1 to be something, okay, with some constants, whatever, but it looks like this, e at minus 2t, minus 2t plus one, okay? And the rest I don't really care, okay? What I want to do is that when t is going to infinity, you see that this one is going to minus infinity, right? So it can be whatever. Right? So for this case, 
we can say that the equilibrium is stable because it doesn't go away, right? These, these curves stay together. They're bounded and they stay together, right? For any value of t. Whereas for these ones, as t goes to infinity, those curves will just fly away. So this is an unstable equilibrium. Whereas for this one would be a stable equilibrium. It's not like the they're converging towards the equilibrium, but what they're doing, right? So the equilibrium in this picture is actually in the origin because it corresponds to z equals zero. This would be the equilibrium, but you know, whatever starts around doesn't go far. So you know, we're all kind of there, right? That's so by the, by the book, it's a stable equilibrium, right? And that's for an eigenvalue to be zero, right? Whereas this one has two eigenvalues zero, but it doesn't mean you can have two eigenvalues zero. And if I change the, the sign up here, it might go to plus infinity. Anyhow, you know, it just gets, right? It gets, uh, so if in this example, if I would have something like lambda one is two and lambda two, three, is zero, I would get something that the Z1 of T is like um, E a 2T, right? Minus 2T plus one. So this one will go actually to infinity as T goes to infinity because the exponential dominates the polynomial, right? So in this case, you know, I just should change a sign there. This would be uh, again, an unstable equilibrium as well, but you know, it's a different kind of instability, right? And one distinguishes between this. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing, guys. You know, I wanted to give you a flavor of this because what I want to do next time, uh, before your test, anyhow, but it will be fun, right? Uh, uh, is to do a three by three system that is called the Lorentz system. Okay, and this is uh, this guy is a simplified model of atmospheric atmospheric. I hope I'm right here. Convection. So what is this? Is how hot air goes up, right? And then cold air comes down. So it's a cyclic motion there, right? So the convection just models the rate of change of this going up. You know, is the hot air when it's hot and then you know, we get all these storms and, and you know, hurricanes sometimes. So it's, it's basically, so it's a model of, okay. So this is just a 3D nonlinear ODE system. So there you go. And we're gonna, and it is very interesting because it's, it's a first, uh, it has some interesting dynamics in it besides the, the equilibrium and whatever. So we'll look at something interesting. Okay, so I'll stop now.